What is going on everyone? It is Super here and welcome to another Injustice 2 video and today I'm going to be doing a full breakdown of the gameplay shown yesterday. Obviously I'm not going to do a breakdown on all 40 minutes of gameplay. I'm just going to put you know some sort of gameplay in the background but I will be talking about all the changes and all the information that we got info about yesterday which was a lot I was actually very happy that we got a lot of answers to questions we had where I had personally so let's run it down here I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay in the background by the way if you want to see all the gameplay in one video make sure you guys follow the link in the description I uploaded the 40 minutes of gameplay all in one so you guys don't have to watch multiple videos you could just watch that if you want to watch you know the gameplay with ed boone's commentary throughout the day so let's get just started here first thing i want to talk about is black manta was actually confirmed to be a stage transition i don't know if it's during this video but at one point they do a stage transition it's in atlantis it's all the way on the right side and he's actually a stage transition so kind of sucks for a lot of black manta fans but i will say that doomsday was an was a uh, stage transition in Injustice and he ended up being in the game. Same thing with uh, Martian Manhunter. He was like a character in the background of one of the stages and he ended up being DLC. So keep hope alive, guys. He might end up being DLC if he's not in the initial roster. Moving on here to something that's very important that I was actually curious about. It was confirmed via the stage or the character select screen that we're actually going to get 28 characters at launch so we're gonna get 28 characters at the launch of injustice 2 they're probably gonna add more dlc you know and more to combat it was eight characters so let's see if they're gonna add eight characters or maybe even more into injustice 2 but we're the base roster is gonna have 28 characters oh and by the way for all you guys uh, trying to speculate on those character silhouettes that are placeholders for the character select screen please don't do that because for mkx i remember they did the same thing and you know the majority of them actually ended up being trolls like they were actually employees from netherrealm you know uh, just characters that people wanted to see they just put silhouettes in there just to troll people so uh don't look too far into it there might be a couple actually that you know might end up making it but it's hard to tell because there are so many characters in there and you could tell a lot of them are you know definitely trolls but moving on here obviously there's not going to be a variation system they replaced it with this gear system that's going to allow you to customize your character to make him play him or her play the way you want it to play and i'll go more into that gear system in a bit there's going to be four bars of meter returning so you know the clash system obviously works the best with the four bars of meter um let's see you can meter burn a forward or back dash to make yourself roll and the thing about this is you guys know in injustice there's really no meter burn reversals there is like if you do um uh four forward three you could make it or if you do forward three and you meter burn it, you could actually make it have armor but there aren't really you know any armored attacks like there are in mortal kombat x so i think this is definitely a way for you to get out of sticky situations on wake up because it is going to be invincible to hitting but i believe you are going to be able to throw your opponent out of it so that's one of the new features added into mk or mkx yeah i'm thinking about mkx that's one of the new features added into injustice 2 um the gear system will definitely be carrying over to online so this has been confirmed uh you're going to be able to customize your character and all your you know gear that powers up your character that gives you more attack more defense more ability stuff like that are going to carry over into ranked online matches and they did say that they're probably going to make a you know mode where all the gear doesn't affect your character sort of like a tournament mode because they did confirm that for competitive tournaments you know a lot of people including myself were wondering how is this going to affect you know injustice 2 competitively because if you have all this gear you know there might be some guy who has the maximum amount of gear his character is decked out and you might have someone going up against him who doesn't have any gear at all you know so they said that they're going to create some sort of tournament mode to balance out all the gear so that is definitely a positive sign there aren't going to be any problems with uh, you know competitive there but on online they will also have some sort of mode where there is no gear system so if the gear system is a little bit too much then you know we have that to look forward to of course the ggpo netcode has been confirmed we're going to get the same netcode from mortal kombat xl which is definitely a positive because that netcode is godlike i can play it you know online mkx 
all day because the netcode is so good. So that's definitely a positive that we're starting off right from the start from another realm game with beautiful netcode. Uh, so moving on here, um, oh, here is one of the best things that I noticed. The interactables are actually blockable, which Oh my god, I can't tell you guys how happy I am because I, I went back to play Injustice, or actually I never played Injustice, but I bought the game a couple weeks ago, and I was getting hit with 20% interactables, which is ridiculous. That should not happen because they were unblockable in Injustice, so I'm very happy that they're blockable now in Injustice 2. Um, so as you guys see, character traits are back. You know, there's different ones. Supergirl has pretty much the same rage as Superman. She just turns blue. Um, Gorilla Grodd has a trait where, you know, at some point, I don't remember which of the video show or gameplay showcases it was, but Gorilla Grodd was playing versus Superman or Supergirl, and when his trait was activated, the I-beam from Superman, I believe it was, actually went through him. So I'm assuming that in Gorilla Grodd's trait, when he has it activated, he's going to be invulnerable to projectiles. That's what it looked like to me. I don't know if it's going to give him more strength or not. Obviously, Superman's uh, trait is going to be the rage. You know, uh, he's going to do extra damage. Batman's trait is going to be the same thing. He's going to get his, uh, you know, uh, little bats around him where you could extend combos. Same as in Justice 1. Uh, Atrocitus. Here's the interesting one. Atrocitus is actually going to have something like Puggles for... You know, Summoner Quan Chi and MKX, he's going to have a little uh, a little helper, which is Dexstar, the uh, blue cat, who's part of the Red Lantern Corps. And the cat is going to have multiple attacks. He could either, you know, shoot projectiles, which from people who were playing, you know, the pre-alpha or this build at E3, they were, uh, you know, just talking about their experiences. They said that he actually could shoot seven projectiles. It's something like Sinestro's trait, which I don't know about because I never played with Sinestro. I'm definitely going to check him out just to check this out. Um, but he could shoot projectiles. He could actually, um, you know, go and attack your opponent and put him in some sort of block string. He could, I believe I saw him do like some sort of force field to cover Atrocitus from... Um, you know projectiles he has a lot of things so that's why I say he's sort of like Puggles from MKX with Summoner Quan Chi and I called you guys I told you that Dexstar was definitely going to be his character trait and Aquaman's trait is pretty much the same I saw you know him have uh, you know a shield around his body with water you know the same thing as in Justice 1 moving on here to something that I thought was very very interesting so at one point during one of the gameplays, someone does a super move. I don't remember whose it was. It might have been Batman's, but he got an extra maybe 4% or 6% on his super move. So, you know, the person interviewing asked Ed Boon, what's the deal with this? You know, this guy did his super move and it did 40% instead of 36 And Ed Boon actually confirmed. This is very, very interesting, by the way. He said at some point during the super moves they're not gonna say when but if you press a button or a sequence of buttons your super move will actually do more damage than it normally would which is crazy and then he went on to say that they always like to add little easter eggs like this they don't say anything but the community figures it out and it's something that they like putting into games you know like a uh, secret variation of brutalities for example like Aaron Black's uh, shoot the crow brutality so he does his grab brutality and then once the brutality finishes you hold a series of buttons and he actually shoots the crow when in the normal one he normally wouldn't so that's very very interesting that they added something extra to the super moves you know super moves are pretty much unless it's guaranteed to kill uh, you know, they're, I, I'm not going to say useless because they do have a place, but you could use your meter for so many more things than the super move. But the fact that they added this, you know, it might be a game changer for it. It might do some extra damage. They might be even more ways to get damage other than, you know, pressing a one sequence of buttons. Maybe you could press two sequence of buttons during the x-ray or the super move and you get extra damage, you know. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, you know, if all the characters have this, 
where where it is that you have to press the buttons what buttons it is uh you know that's gonna come out once the game comes out and everyone gets their hands on them hopefully i don't forget about this because this is actually a pretty big deal and something new that they're bringing over to injustice 2 so that's gonna be it for the gameplay portion now let me talk a little bit about the gear system real quick um so i believe you're gonna be able to have six slots to put gear on your opponent or on your um on your character um one on your head you know your your arms your legs your chest piece stuff like that some are going to be cosmetics some are actually going to increase your you know uh i believe the four categories are health defense ability and attack those are the four categories of your character you know there's some characters i believe i saw aquaman have 95 health you know superman has 105 health uh stuff like this and all this gear is gonna you know make your attributes go up or even down i don't know if there's going to be any uh gear that's going to give you negative effects but you know the point of the gear system i saw many times during the gameplay after the match they they earn gear you know maybe a um some sort of armor and it says increase 2.8 percent of damage after every attack something like that uh so that's what the gear system is going to be you're going to be able to customize your character and one of the cool things about this is that it's not only going to change the way your character looks but it's also going to change your character's moves so at the end of this actual gameplay which i'll try to i'll try to put the little clip here but they actually changed the eye beams for supergirl's attacks so they put a headpiece on her which makes her eye beams shoot pink instead of red which i thought was really really sick and something that i'm really looking forward to because it's going to be awesome having my own personal you know superman shooting out whatever kind of you know color lasers that i want you know it's going to be awesome so that is pretty much going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Long, long breakdown because there was so much information given to us by the guys over at NetherRealm, especially Ed Boon. So want to thank you guys for watching and showing all the support during this E3 coverage. And I will see you guys next time.